Live from downtown Bakersfield, 23 ABC News starts now. Good morning and thanks for tuning in for 23 ABC News at 6 a.m. I'm Danielle Kern Camp. I'm Mike Hart. Glad you're here. Let's bring in Emma Lockhart sitting in for Elena Russ this morning with more on. Well, so today possibly be the last triple day for that's what it's looking like now that could change but you know? that would make today yeah. <laughs> round out the second heat wave yes. of the year so, right okay. yeah no more triple digits in the forecast for now but okay. yeah that could change uh we are tracking 100 degrees topping out at 100 degrees here in bakersfield today uh, but we're going to see those cooler temperatures tomorrow more seasonal for this time of year in the upper 90s that's where we should be for this time of year and throughout the week those temperatures aren't going to be fluctuating much just here and there by a few degrees, mostly seasonal here in the valley, and our air quality is improving now in the moderate range. And breezy conditions are expected later on this evening, so that'll be a nice relief from those high temperatures. And it looks like those breezy conditions are going to continue tomorrow as well as that cool down impacts the county. I'll have more details on that in just a bit. New this morning, the Trump administration is moving to end asylum protections for most Central American migrants. A rule published today bars migrants from seeking asylum in the United States if they've traveled through another country first. Tens of thousands of migrant families from Central America travel through Mexico to the U.S. each month, many claiming asylum. The Trump administration claims families are taking advantage of legal loopholes it says allow migrants a free pass to the country while they wait out phony asylum requests. The rule is almost certain to face a legal challenge. U.S. law allows refugees to request asylum when they arrive at the U.S., regardless of how they did so. But there's an exception for those who have come through a country considered safe. This morning, President Trump is doubling down on his comments, telling Democratic Congresswomen to, quote, go back to where they came from. The president's comments coming as ICE launched deportation raids that so far have only resulted in small scale action. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi has more. This morning, new tweets from President Trump targeting Congresswomen of color, still not naming names, but criticizing Democrats for defending the women who in an earlier tweet he told to go back and help fix the totally broken and crime infested places from which they came. The president not only evoking an old and widely established racist phrase, but failing to acknowledge that three of the four minority Congresswomen the comments were directed at were born in the United States, the other a naturalized citizen. And now overnight, Trump tweeting in part, quote, their disgusting language and the many terrible things they say about the United States must not be allowed to go unchallenged. A group of people that came from, I don't know where they came from. Democrats have been quick to condemn the president's comments, calling it, quote, xenophobic and hate filled. I am freaking appalled that the president of the United States conducts himself in such a disgraceful and racist way. All four women have been highly critical of Trump's immigration policies and the president's long threatened deportation raids that launched Sunday. They're going to take people out and they're going to bring them back to their countries. The major operation to arrest and deport up to 2,000 undocumented immigrants sparked nationwide protests and instilled fear in migrant communities. But so far, immigration groups and local officials say they haven't seen it. New York's mayor tweeting, quote, no confirmed ICE activity. ICE, however, confirms it's out there. And for the past week, it was actually House Speaker Nancy Pelosi who was feuding with the four Democratic Congresswomen over her support for the border aid package. And it took the president's comments to unify the Democratic Party as Pelosi and others came to their defense. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, Washington. The woman believed to be caught on video dragging a dog behind a scooter while riding through a local neighborhood is set to be in court this week. Elaine Rosa is facing felony animal abuse charges. Back in January, a video surfaced showing a woman on an electric scooter while a dog was being dragged behind her. That woman is believed to be Rosa. Back in February, the district attorney's office filed charges and Rosa turned herself in. She's due in court tomorrow at 9 a.m. Also due in court tomorrow, the North High School equipment manager accused of inappropriate sexual contact with multiple victims. 40-year-old Edwin Rodriguez faces 11 felony and 13 misdemeanor charges for inappropriate behavior at North High dating all the way back to 2015. He was charged back in February. He's pled not guilty. Rodriguez is due in court tomorrow at 9 a.m. If you are headed out this morning, you need to fill up. We have some good news for you. According to GasBuddy.com, prices have dropped in Bakersfield nearly four and a half cents. 
Well, in the last week, the average price for a gallon of regular is about $374. The lowest price, about $332. That's at the on-the-go food store at 2501 River Boulevard in Northeast Bakersfield. This week, SunPower and Bakersfield College are teaming up to host the fourth annual Kern Solar Energy Academy for local high schoolers. The Summer Academy is a five-day project-based learning experience. Teams function as a solar company to design a residential solar system over the course of five days. Afterwards, they present their project to a panel of judges. Not only will students be getting hands-on experience, but they also get to meet professionals and experts in the solar industry this week. The Kern Solar Academy kicks off this morning morning at 8:30 and runs until Friday. Calling all Kern County softball players, Cal State's uh, softball teams hosting instructional camps this week beginning today. The runners hosting an instructional youth camp geared for girls 6 to 13 gives them a chance to learn from Division I coaches and play alongside student athletes. Camp today costs $60, runs from 9.30 to noon. Tomorrow's camp is an instructional prospect camp for girls 8th, 8th through 12th grades. That camp costs $150 and runs from 10 a.m. till 3 p.m. This Thursday, you have the chance to enjoy some wine, fun, and help give back to a good cause. Alpha Canine Sanctuary is holding their fun and fundraising event out of Imbibe Wine and Spirits this week. The local rescue sanctuary will have a raffle, wine, and food all at Imbibe with 100% of the proceeds going toward keeping the no-kill shelter up and running with food, toys, and spay and neutering assistance. The public is welcome to attend, but you do have to be 21 years or older. The event's happening from 5 to 8 p.m. You can make a reservation by calling 661-633-9463. The fair is coming to town in Paso Robles this week. The Mid-State Fair, of course, is known for hosting big names every year. And some of the musical acts this year will include Cardi B, Blake Shelton, Zach Brown Band, Miranda Lambert, Old Dominion, and many others. Of course, you can also look forward to the rides, games, exhibits, horse show, and, of course, the fair's food. The Mid-State Fair starts on Wednesday, and that's actually the day that you can enjoy free carnival rides. It goes through July 28th. Leonard Skinner. Ah! Mm. All right, let's take a look at some of the events that are happening around Kern County this week. You can get a little exercise when the sun goes down because the full moon bike ride is back. Bike Bakersfield's hosting it tomorrow. Organizers say a great way to engage residents and bring the bike community together. It starts at Beach Park on Oak and 21st at 8 p.m. You head out along the Kern River Parkway Trail before ending at the Marketplace in the southwest. Lights and helmets are strongly encouraged for all riders smart thing to do. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the marketplace, concerts by The Fountain continue this week. Rod P and New Standard are performing multi-genre hits Thursday from 7 to 9. Takes place at the marketplace right there on Ming Avenue through this month. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. It does, yeah. Taking a look outside, we're already warming up 73 right now in Bakersfield, three degrees cooler than it was at this time yesterday. So we are tracking cooler temperatures uh, compared to what we reached yesterday. As for the rest of the county, warm temperatures as well, 69. In Fraser Park right now, 63 in Dehashapi, 75 in Lake Isabella, and 77 out in Mojave. And thankfully, better air quality today. Now in the moderate range, we had a few days where we were unhealthy for sensitive groups. And we were experiencing very hazy conditions outside. That forecasted AQI today, 90, so significantly better than yesterday. Widespread triple digits across the valley, but like I said earlier, trending slightly cooler compared to what we reached yesterday. 95 at the Grapevine today. Over in our mountain communities, 87 expected in Fraser Park and Tehachapi, 95 up in Lake Isabella. Out in our desert cities, hot out there, upper 90s to those triple digits. But more seasonal conditions on the way. I'll have details on your seven day forecast coming up. Still to come here at five, it's been months since the Notre Dame Cathedral went up in flames. We have an update on the progress to rebuild. And we are less than a week away from the 50th anniversary of this one small step. We'll take an historic look back at the Apollo 11 moon landing, 609. This is 23ABC. Welcome back to 23ABC. Taking a look at your traffic, there are no major traffic incidents to report at this time. Those roadways across the county moving freely as well as those freeways, but we will bring you the very latest updates on your traffic throughout the morning, so stay with us. 
We're getting a look at the reconstruction progress for the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris three months after a disastrous fire devastated a famous landmark. The work site is a high security zone. Few people are let in and given the high concentration of lead from the melted roof, all are required to wear special protective jumpsuits on the roof, a gaping hole where the fire burned most fiercely. Engineers on site say studies will need to be made when the walls of Notre Dame are thoroughly dried out to determine how much weight they can bear. Still, they believe President Macron's 2024 deadline for rebuilding Notre Dame is possible. Now to a mystery at the Vatican. The disappearance of the young daughter of a Vatican employee has gone unsolved for nearly 40 years. Now investigators are hoping that a new discovery just this weekend will lead to a break in the case. ABC's Janae Norman takes a look. In this morning's GMA First Look, Mystery at the Vatican. Investigators are searching for the truth behind the decades-old disappearance of 15-year-old Emmanuel Orlandi. Orlandi was 15 years old in 1983 when she disappeared after leaving her home in Vatican City to go take music lessons in Rome. She was never seen again. But last week, Vatican investigators acting on a break in the case, prying open the tombs of two 19th century German princesses, but both tombs empty. The excavation occurring in this cemetery on the grounds of the Pontifical Teutonic College inside Vatican City, just next door to St. Peter's Basilica. Those empty tombs priming officials to investigate inside the college. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have a live report from inside the walls of Vatican City. With your you make first look. I'm Janae Norman, ABC News, New York. Jeffrey Epstein, the man accused of luring young teens to his homes and paying them for sex acts, could get out of jail today. His bail hearing is today. Epstein says he'll give up his house, plane and passport and pay for his own house arrest and be tracked. Epstein's lawyers say he should be let out because he's behaved since his last plea deal in 2005. Prosecutors say he has not behaved and is a flight risk with almost infinite means. And more American companies are now shifting production out of China into other countries. The Wall Street Journal says companies that make things like Crocs, Roomba vacuums and GoPro cameras have all started moving production to places like Vietnam, India and Malaysia to avoid tariffs. Nearly a million Facebook users say they're going to raid Area 51 in Nevada on September 20th in a quest to see aliens. The Facebook event page is titled Storm Area 51, They Can't Stop All of Us. And it states we can run faster than their bullets. It's inviting users from around the world to join a Naruto run into the area. That's a Japanese manga inspired running style featuring arms outstretched backwards and heads forward. The mysterious Area 51 has been the subject of conspiracy theories for decades of course, but many people believe the U.S. government stores its secrets about UFOs and aliens at that military site. It comes a few weeks after a group of U.S. senators was briefed about reported encounters between the U.S. Navy and an unidentified aircraft or unidentified flying object. Hmm. Well, the Apollo Mission Control Center is getting a makeover this week. It's being fully restored to appear as it did in the era of the Apollo 11 moon landing. This coming just in time for the 50th anniversary. ABC's Maggie Rooley gives us an inside look. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Stepping into the restored Apollo 11 Missions Operations Control Room, it feels like that message just came over the speaker. Beautiful. Yeah. July 20th, 1969, America becomes the first country to put a man on the moon. And every mathematical calculation, every decision had to be cleared through this room. Apollo 11 flight director Gene Krantz says it feels like he's stepping back in time. The people that lived here and worked here, the room talks to them. The eight and a half million dollar project recreated every detail down to the data on the computer screen, the ashtrays, even a specific crew member's coffee cup. We had to get the exact colors of coffee cups, even the patterns of coffee cups. The girl that was in charge of this spent hours and hours on eBay and Etsy and in antique shops and thrift stores. Sandra Tetley, the Johnson Space Center Historic Preservation Officer, says it took her team six years to make everything just right, digging through mission control records and the few videos that existed from that day. You are telling history, so it needs to be exact. 
Krantz says it's nearly perfect. And walking into the restored room, he's brought back to the raw emotion of that historic day. This room was uh, really stirring. And the emotional intensity in this room was, uh, I mean, it was almost overwhelming. It was the kind of thing that uh, it only happens once in your life. Maggie Bruley, ABC News, New York. Wow. Very cool. Uh, we are thankfully tracking some cooler temperatures. Low pressure is going to start moving inland. So that is what is responsible for those slightly cooler temperatures today compared to where we, we were at yesterday. And they'll be cooling down even more throughout the week. But taking a look at today, we are still going to be hot. Low 90s by noon, upper 90s by about 2 p.m. Then topping out at 100 with an increase in wind speeds at that time. And we are tracking those triple digits headed into your evening as well. But thankfully, wind speeds picking up a nice onshore flow later on this afternoon, and it looks like they'll stay fairly breezy through those hours later on tonight, possibly reaching 15 miles per hour here in Bakersfield. So fairly breezy compared to where we're usually at. Looks like our wind speeds will stay strong through those early morning hours tomorrow, especially in our mountain passes as well as the desert. But taking a look at those temperatures, well, we're going to stay fairly uh, stable over the next few days headed into the week, not really fluctuating by much, just a few degrees here and there uh, each day, mostly in the upper 90s throughout the week, cooling down to the mid 90s on Saturday, sunny skies throughout the week, and then warming up headed into next week. 95 and sunny in the Kern River Valley today, low 90s tomorrow, then the mid 90s return headed into your midweek, and then we start cooling down headed into your weekend. Tehachapi 87 and sunny today, mid 80s return tomorrow, and they'll be sticking around over the next few, over a few days. Uh, Fraser Park 87 and sunny mid 80s returning in Fraser Park. So following to trend and then those mid 80s headed into your midweek, then the low 80s for your weekend sunny, mostly sunny skies throughout the week. Just seeing an increase in cloud cover potentially on Wednesday and Thursday. Still to come a recall this morning. We'll tell you why you might want to throw out a package of ground beef because it could contain that. We'll explain straight ahead 619. This is 23 ABC. 622 now. Jules CEO says he's sorry to the parents of teen vapors. It's part of a new documentary that came out today called Vaporized, America's E-Cigarette Addiction. CEO Kevin Burns says he empathizes as a dad, saying, quote, I'd say I'm sorry that their child's using the product and that I was hoping there was nothing that we did that made it appealing to them. Burns admitted, though, there isn't enough research on the long-term impacts on e-cigarettes. Juul shut down its social media pages and stopped selling sweet-flavored vaping liquid, all as a part of its effort to stop teen vaping. A federal judge has ruled that e-cigarette companies must apply to the Food and Drug Administration for a public health review within 10 months. The FDA has to impose the May 2020 deadline following a previous decision by the judge in a lawsuit filed by health groups, including the American Academy of Pediatrics. In 2017, the agency allowed e-cigarettes to stay on the market until 2022 before companies applied for authorization. Products were also permitted to remain on the market indefinitely during review. Review. The judge ruled in May those actions by the FDA were illegal. Products that submit applications by the May deadline will be allowed to remain on the market for up to a year during the review process. The FDA can remove products that miss the deadline. A Michigan-based company is recalling ground beef due to a unexpected ingredient. Ada Valley Gourmet, based in Michigan, recalling almost 3,500 pounds of raw ground beef meatloaf due to possible contamination with broken metal bits. According to the USDA, the frozen beef was produced on May 20th, 2019. It was shipped to hospitals in three states, Arizona, Nevada, and California. The recalled beef was sent in five pound packages marked with the lot code 17034. So far, there are no confirmed reports of any adverse reactions due to this problem. Many of us take dietary supplements, actually more than half of American adults do. That's right. As a reporter Meredith Wood explains in today's Health Minute, most of the supplements on the market today don't do much to help your heart. Probiotics, multivitamins, vitamin C. There's a good possibility you take some kind of dietary supplement. 
but are they really doing any good? According to the Journal of the American Medical Association, 52% of American adults use these pills. But new research says that most vitamins and minerals found in these supplements actually don't do anything for your heart health. In fact, they may even increase your risk of a stroke. The Annals of Internal Medicine did find that omega-3 fatty acids commonly found in fish oil reduce the risk of heart attacks and coronary heart disease, but the group says almost everything else had no significant effect on mortality. Instead, one potential option research says that can help your heart is a simple change in diet. Researchers found limited evidence that a low-salt diet may reduce the risk of death, but only in those with high blood pressure. For today's Health Minute, I'm Meredith Wood. Still to come in our next half hour, looking for something to do outside this week. Oh, there's several things. We will run them down for you straight ahead. And today is Amazon's biggest day of the year. We're looking at all the deals surrounding Prime Day coming up next at 630. Live from downtown Bakersfield, 23 ABC News starts now. Millions of people along the Gulf Coast under a flash flood warning as Tropical Depression Barry continues to drop significant amounts of rain. We'll have the latest. And as utilities around the state begin public safety power shutoffs, Kern County officials are working on a plan in case we ever find ourselves without electricity. And a good morning to you. Thanks for staying with 23 ABC News at 630 as we start our final half hour. I'm Mike Hart. I'm Danielle Kern Camp. Let's bring in Emma Lockhart. See what this week is shaping up to be in the weather department. Because after a very warm weekend, <laughs> so we was, can only hope. You it see the head turn though when you start saying that? She yeah. Went, uh, I might have some bad. I have good news and bad news. Okay. okay. Which triple one should we have first? Triple digits today. Okay. Right. So bad news. So first. write it out. But, today. You know. <laughs> After that, it's looking like it's going to be in the upper 90s for most days oh. of the week. No triple digits in the forecast uh, nice. following this day. So good news there. And our air quality is improving now in the moderate range. So hopefully those hazy conditions improve as well. And we are looking at that cool down where seasonal temperatures are right around the corner. And those wind speeds are picking up in our mountain communities. They'll be picking up even more later on this afternoon, even here in the valley. So somewhat of a relief from those high temperatures, but we are tracking warm conditions already outside 70 right now in McFarland 65 in Lebec and Fraser Park 60 in Pine Mountain Club 63 in Tehachapi 74 up in Lake Isabella and 77 out in Mojave but like I said more seasonal temperatures right around the corner we should be in the upper 90s for this time of year uh, and it looks like those upper 90s will be sticking around over the next few days I'll have more details on that cool down coming up this morning we're tracking an earthquake that happened uh, about 30 miles outside of Ridgecrest and Coso Junction. I know we've been tracking the aftershocks after those July 4th and July 5th earthquakes uh, for about a week now. There have been thousands of aftershocks. This one a 4.2 magnitude. It happened at around 138 this morning. Again, that's about 30 miles outside of Ridgecrest. So far, no reports of any injuries or any damage to that area, but we'll continue tracking this and let you know. Well, Tropical Depression Barry is expected to cause significant and potentially life-threatening flooding over the next few days. Roads have been washed out. Rescue teams are busy, in position, thousands without power. People along the Gulf Coast up to Tennessee and Missouri have been stacking sandbags and say they are getting ready. Today, an organization called Second Harvest Food Bank in the area is bringing about 170,000 meals to storm victims. They say continue to ride this out. Tomorrow, the Kern County Board of Supervisors is expected to hear a presentation on the county's response plan for public safety power shutoffs. We're in the midst of wildfire season and utility companies like PG&E and SoCal Edison are already implementing these shutoffs as a precaution. Last month, the county's emergency council formed a team to develop a response plan for consequences of a sustained power outage throughout the county. That team has devised a plan and now they want to bring it before the board for approval and any recommendations. This presentation will be open to the public tomorrow at the Board of Supervisors office at 9 a.m. located at 1115 Truxton Avenue. Speaking of utilities, SoCal Gas bring in a new regional base to Bakersfield and it opens today. That base and training center is located on McMurtry Avenue in Oildale. 
The 31,000 square foot facility will be one of SoCal Gas's main bases, and officials say will bring clean, affordable natural gas to Bakersfield, Kern County, and parts of the San Joaquin Valley. There will also be a fueling center available for public use beginning in the fall. The grand openings this morning at 11 a.m. New details in a massive oil spill in the Kern County Canyon. State regulators are calling out Chevron this morning, saying the company has not done enough to prevent future spills from happening. Since May, nearly 800,000 gallons of oil and water have been dumped into the canyon just 35 miles west of Bakersfield. Chevron says when the flow was noticed, they immediately notified the appropriate regulatory agencies. The company also said the flow has been stopped and contained and that there has been no impact on waterways or wildlife. However, now regulators are taking a further step by ordering the company to take more action to prevent future spills and stop steam injections around the spill. It is the ultimate holiday for you online shoppers. It is Amazon's Prime Day and this year. They're doubling down with two huge days of savings. It's, two days! It's great news. Plus, the competition is fighting back with their own big bargains. Here's ABC's Rebecca Jarvis with tips on how to get the best deals and where to get them. Amazon Prime Day now underway, ushering in a slew of delectable deals. Consumers expected to spend $5 billion worldwide. But it's not just Amazon. Now many rivals also offering their own Black Friday in July sales. No membership necessary. Target, Walmart, and eBay are having some great sales. Where the best sales lay are in apparel and also in electronics. Call it the halo effect. Walmart getting a jump on the competition, kicking off its own sales Sunday, touting four straight days of discounts on everything from electronics to video games. Happening now at Target.com, deal days. Markdowns on thousands of items, including furniture, clothes, and toys. Plus, with order pickup and ship delivery, get those orders within hours of hitting buy. At Best Buy, big markdowns on Apple devices. And at eBay, a 48-hour crash sale. Why is it called a crash sale? Last year, Amazon site went down on Prime Day. A play on technical troubles during last year's Prime Day with deals on smartphones, gaming systems, and shoes. While you can get a lot of electronics on Amazon during Amazon Prime Day, discounts on apparel, especially for back to school, are happening at the department stores and specialty retailers. Some of the deep discounts on apparel are happening at stores such as Macy's, Nordstrom, and Saks Fifth Avenue that are having discounts of up to 80 to 90 percent off on their luxury items. Well, you will soon be hearing Simba roar in theaters once again as the actors gathered for the world premiere of the live action film. It was held at the Dolby Theater in Hollywood. The film, of course, features Donald Glover, who was born in Kern County and is voicing Simba in the film. Beyonce lends her voice to Nala and James Earl Jones reprises his role as Mufasa. The Lion King will be in theaters on July 18th. Looking for something that involves the entire family, the sun going down and some animals? Well, head out to the California Living Museum for Twilight at Calm. Mm. The local uh, zoo inviting the public to visit them between 5 and 8 p.m. every day through August 24th. You can bring a picnic dinner to enjoy with your loved ones and the animals. Don't feed the animals, though. Don't feed them the food you bring. Yeah. Admission is just $5 for adults, $3 for kids between 3 and 12 years of age. All right, let's bring Emma back in once again. Take a look outside with our ooh, rooftop HD cam. Yeah, beautiful clear skies, although you can see that haze still out there. Our air quality is improving, but unfortunately, hazy conditions are continuing as well. Taking a look at those current conditions right now, 73 here in Bakersfield, so warming on up. Those triple digits are expected later on today. But like I said, air quality improving. We had a few days where we were unhealthy for sensitive groups. Now in the moderate range with a forecasted AQI of 90. So hopefully those breezy conditions that we are expecting later on this afternoon will clear out the valley uh, and improve those hazy conditions just a bit. Widespread triple digits expected across the valley today. 95 at the Grapevine over in our mountain communities. 87 expected in Fraser Park and Tehachapi. 95 in Lake Isabella. Out in our desert cities, hot out there as well. Upper 90s and triple digits expected, but more seasonal conditions are on the way. I'll have details on your seven day forecast coming up. The case continues for a caregiver accused of killing an elderly patient. Here's a preview of today's court TV. 
I'm Vinny Politan. and today on Court TV, we are in a verdict watch. That means a verdict can happen at any moment. It's a jury in Cobb County, Georgia, that must decide if a caregiver is guilty of the murder of one of the residents of the assisted living facility that he was working at. So we're on a verdict watch at any moment. When that verdict comes in, you'll see it and hear it live right here on Court TV. Still to come, the Bakersfield Fire Department needs you. Tell you how you can become a local firefighter and what's required. We'll turn the lights on and get back to business. Straight, straight ahead. Welcome back to 23 ABC. There are no major traffic incidents to report at this time, but there is one lane closed on the 99 from the I-5 to the 166. Not impacting traffic right now, not slowing any traffic down, but uh, we will be bringing you the very latest on your traffic, so stay with us. All right, Emma, thank you for that. Well, of course, the job fest season technically starts in February and runs through the start of the summer. There's a whole bunch of job fest events that are going on, but actually hiring goes on all year round, including some exciting things that are coming up uh, locally. Frank Cabrera, Josh Connors from Job Fest joining us in studio this morning. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming in. Thanks for having yeah, us. we know that heat of the season is that February through the spring. It's just like every week there's another uh, Job Fest event that's going on. But uh, a couple popped up right now. You say you're getting more contact. People are calling in saying we need we need we need people. Absolutely. So we have some major job fairs coming up. Okay. Uh, one of them that's uh, going to be happening today, actually, at 9 o'clock, 9 to 11, is a vault. They're going to be hiring for several administrative positions. Okay. So uh, very excited about that, as well as on Thursday, they're going to have uh, another job fair concentrated on construction. What do we know uh, about vault? So Volt uh, is is a staffing agency. They're connected with oh, okay. you know, a lot of different companies locally. Uh, and so one of the uh, main focuses again today is those administrative positions that, you know, we wanted to get the word out and be prepared, you know, as you go meet with them for those positions. People that are going to this event, uh, the, the, you, you want them to follow the same thing you always do when coming to Job Fest? Dress for success, bring multiple copies of your resume, and be ready to interview on the spot. The managers will be there. And one thing about staffing agents, I've worked for multiple, okay. you know, before I started this position. They're great. It's just, hey, there's nothing, it's not like it used to be where you come in every day and they say, I need three forklift drivers or I'll pick me. It's, <laughs> you're kind, it's a full-time job. It's just they pay you while you're on your probation period and then there's a chance to get hired on from the company that you're working for too. So don't think it's a temporary job because they're not. They have great positions, great paying positions, and it could turn into a full-time job. But it's not always like that. Is not, that true? Not always. My okay. experience is it has been because I'm a hard worker, so I always get that spot. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. just put in your time, do whatever they say. And the good thing is, let's say the company they're contracting you to goes under, you're going to go to the next company. You don't really have to look for another job because you're employed by Volt. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So I see what you're they saying. don't need a forklift operator anymore, but now this this distribution center does or this warehouse does. So it's And good. the difference between today and Thursday, you said administrative positions today, Thursday is it's industrial? Be light industrial, yes. Okay. And that would involve So that's gonna involve everything from, you know, uh, general warehouse, mm -hmm. there's gonna be, you know, general labor positions. So you wanna make sure that, you know, you are prepared for both of those events. Uh, bring your certifications, come ready with, you know, anything thing that's going to uh, show yourself to be the best candidate for that job and like he said you know with these companies it's like an on-the-spot uh, interview every day that you go on that job you're actually interviewing for that permanent position okay so we have Volt this week and then Starbucks Starbucks. Does it seem like Starbucks always needs people? They always need people, but they're always opening new facilities. That's mm -hmm. what this recruitment on the 23rd is actually in Taft. They're going to okay. build their location in Taft. Um, they're also opening one up on Allen and Stockdale. That's still in the building phases, so be on the lookout for that too. But same thing, when Starbucks came to the Bakersfield Job Fest, I think they hired 24 to 26 people really? on the spot. So they are ready and you get those education benefits that the, you know, medical benefits full time and part time. So even if you go to school all day and you need just a part time job, you're still eligible for benefits, stocks in the company and you're a partner. You're not an employee. So it's like an employee ran company. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, you know, what do you tell people that sit there and they, they may come out and they might uh, be looking for a specific job and then someone like Starbucks and I'm not trying to single them out, but they come and say, hey, we really want you. And they think, well, that's not really where I want to go. Is there something to be said about encouraging people, take a jump, take that job, 
because you never know where that's going to lead. The thing I think about is in the future. So let's say you want to move somewhere else. Starbucks is worldwide. You can go anywhere in the world with this company. And I've, I've known the managers and the district managers mm -hmm. now for years, and they are so happy. You know what I mean? They take care of their people, especially if you like coffee, you get your free coffee. And I don't know, when I go in there, they're all wired up. So I was like, about hey. to say, some people are like, uh, you've had enough, Mike. Just, let's get just, some water. Let's just move on. Uh, if people need more information on, on any of these, any of three of these events, where should they go? They're going to go to our Facebook, Instagram accounts, at Job Fest Kern, so they can get you know any additional information for these events. All right, very good, Frank, Josh. Thanks. Next Thank time, you. bring coffee. Yes. All right, <laughs> yes. Very good. Let's go over to Emma, <laughs> standing by in the weather key with a look outside right now. It's not a hundred yet, right, Emma? Not yet, but uh, not. Be reaching 100. Looks like okay. we're going to be reaching 100 today, but cooler than what we experienced yesterday here in Bakersfield. We reached a high of 104. Today, we'll just be reaching a high of 100 here in Bakersfield, so slightly cooler. And then even cooler temperatures are on the way starting tomorrow. Uh, low pressure is going to start moving inland, so that's going to drop those temperatures and create a nice breeze. But taking a look at those conditions throughout the day here in Bakersfield, we're going to be warming up quickly. Low 90s by noon, upper 90s by about 2 p.m. then topping out at 100 that time during that time is when we could see some gusty winds potentially reaching 15 miles per hour here in Bakersfield and 100 sticking around through the evening but sunny skies throughout the day and like I mentioned we're going to see a nice onshore flow so that's going to create some breezy conditions especially in our mountain passes and our desert cities warm or increasing here in the valley 15 mile per hour winds potentially in Bakersfield later on tonight and looks like those wind speeds will stay strong through those early morning hours tomorrow as well. So a little bit of a relief from those high temperatures, but like I said, more seasonal conditions over the next few days, topping out in the upper 90s starting tomorrow. So that's where we should be for this time of year. And it looks like we'll see those upper 90s headed into Wednesday as well and Thursday. But take a look at Saturday. That's when we'll dip below average in the mid 90s. But throughout the week, those temperatures not really fluctuating by much, just a few degrees here and there. So stable conditions and sunny skies. 95 in the Kern River Valley today, low 90s on Tuesday. Tuesday and then we'll see those mid 90s return for your midweek uh, to Hatchby 87 and sunny today and then we will see those mid 80s tomorrow 87 in Fraser Park as well then those mid 80s return tomorrow and we'll we'll see them uh, continue over the next few days I'll have one final look at your weather and that cool down when 23 ABC News returns Calling all future firefighters, Bakersfield Fire Department is looking for some new recruits. In this week's Kern Back in Business, 23 ABC Scott Sheehan spoke with BFD about their openings and how you can apply. Scott? Danielle Bakersfield Fire says that their department is like a second family to them, and it's their honor to work and serve in Bakersfield. Now the department is looking for firefighters to fill those spots who they, uh, they've recently been promoted up the ranks. My whole family is first responders. And so it's been a, a dream of mine to be, uh, to be a firefighter. I'm loving being a firefighter and, and all the tasks that come with it. The Bakersfield Fire Department is a second family for their firefighters. <laughs> Wesley Howard has been roaming the halls of Station 1 since he could walk. This is a picture of him riding with his uncle won the fire engines when he was 18 months old. Now he's wearing the BFD fire helmet to serve his community. Oh, it's a... Uh... It's a pretty rewarding experience. Um, I, I don't know, I'm honored to be here. I, I think about it every day and that picture then to, to where I'm at now, uh, it's, it's pretty cool coming to work every day. It's that family atmosphere that motivates the Bakersfield firefighters to serve their city. The thing that I've liked the most about working with Bakersfield Fire is the family, feeling behind it, the camaraderie with the guys. And um, it just feels like everybody's here for you when it comes to if you need something, they're able to, they're, they're willing to help. Now that family is looking to grow. The Bakersfield Fire Public Information Officer Casey Snow says the department is looking to hire 30 new firefighters. It's just to fill, fill all the different positions that we need. There's been a lot of promotions lately. A couple of new positions have opened up. So it's time to fill in from the bottom uh, with, some, with some firefighters that are hungry and eager to serve the community. Snow says applicants need to have their Firefighter 1 certificate, emergency medical technician certificate, and their physical ability test certificate. We're looking for certain intangibles from, from the individuals that want to be part of our department. Uh, very team-oriented, 
uh, willing to put in work and ultimately just willing to serve as part of a team that, that that's our mission. Howard says it's that team spirit that helped him stay safe and stood out when he went to his first structure fire. There's fire rolling over the top of you in a hallway, smoke coming out, you know, the doors and windows. Um, you trust a lot on your crew. You know, my captain was there with me and following his guidance and his assessment of the situation, uh, there's a lot of trust that goes into that environment. For those looking to join the team, Paxson says becoming a firefighter is as much mental as physical. I would say study up. There's a lot of books out there that will help you uh, achieve the grades that you need and help you learn the test to be able to pass. Both Howard and Paxson are early in their Bakersfield fire careers, a career Howard hopes will lead him to mentoring the next generation of Bakersfield firefighters. And at some point when I know, you know, it's my turn to, to promote and serve the department in, in the next rank and so on, um, I'll take those steps um, when appropriate. If you have your certifications and want to apply, the Bakersfield firefighter recruitment window ends July 22nd. For more information about how you can apply and the qualifications to be a Bakersfield firefighter, visit this store on our website at turnto23.com. For current back in business, Scott Sheehan, 23ABC, connecting you. Well, we all know it's hard to resist taking out your phone at a wedding to capture the moment the bride and groom say I do, their first kiss, when they make their way down the aisle. Well, now one wedding photographer, she's giving you a reason why you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't take out your phone. Wedding photographer Hannah Way from Texas posted this picture that has since gone viral. She says she's fed up with guests ruining her professional shots by taking pictures with their cell phones. In the post, she addressed it to the girl holding the iPhone, saying, what exactly were you planning on doing with that photo? printing it out, saving it, looking at it every day. And she continued on to say, but my bride would have printed this photo out, looked at it often and reminisced about the moment her father walked her down the aisle on her wedding day. I mean, she kind of has a point, right? She has a great point. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. And you I, see that all the time too. Everyone the taking time. out their phones to capture the moment. Not when I got married. Well, no, well okay. <laughs> that no else. phone, no <laughs> phones, that, none, of that, none of this going on then. Yeah. But I've seen no a lot iPhones. of brides, I've seen a lot of brides say that now, right. don't, that you're not allowed to take the phones out at the yeah. ceremony. I think that's a great idea. Well, I, I heard of one where they on had the a basket in the back. Mm. For because those? everyone has their own yeah. personalized, they have all your, you know, you, yeah, you, you know what yours looks yeah. like. Switch. Yeah. yeah, and they were just, people would put them in as they came in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there was somebody there, it was almost like an usher, but he was, and they would just make sure, is it on silent? It's the phone usher. Right. I love that. Imagine does it start it. ringing and you look off. in the basket going, which phone is it? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So. They spend idea. a fortune on the photographer anyways. Yeah. So. Right. And uh, you spend a fortune on Amazon Prime Day. Yeah. Who does that too? Somebody already got a new trash can. Hey, it opens when you hover over over it. Ooh, I, I have, have one of those. I Do you really? It. It's a good what happens when the batteries Emma, run thank out? Thank you. It hasn't happened yet. Okay. Okay. Then you buy one. <laughs> well, on today's the, next the day, right? Day. How long do you? Ha it, and it changes every. Every five minutes, they're adding some new deals as often as every five minutes. But yeah. it's today and tomorrow, so uh -huh. uh, it's uh, and what pretty I like dangerous. Is that other retailers are doing but the have deals you checked? too? Did you check the other? Anyone check the other websites checked. to see mm -hmm. if they're? But I'll be going I, to Target. I did. I did. Ooh, I got yes. something from Nordstrom. I actually went to the newsroom <laughs> during the break to go get my wallet because I got something you did. from Nordstrom. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Whoopsie. I did, and I was working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be yeah. called a break, Mike. Right, it's called a right. break. Sorry, sorry. It's going to be hot, so the perfect day to do some online shopping. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Stay yeah. indoors and, yeah, that. spend a lot of and money. Uh, 73 already here in Bakersfield. <laughs> hot temperatures across uh -huh. the county, but more seasonal conditions. Uh, starting tomorrow, upper right. 90. So a cool down, but not by much. Right. Not by much. All right. Thanks, All right. Emma. We got to get out of here. We have shopping to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> have a great day.